now van technologies probably in the next couple of videos we'll be discussing more uh, in detail about the different van technologies we use what are the different differences between them how they are going to work some of the basic overview on on the different van technologies some of the old van technologies and some of the modern van connections now if you just get back to the basics of van now van is something given by the provider now let's take an example i got a branch office in hyderabad and i got branch office in dubai and i want to ensure that these two different branch offices should talk to each other we we do connect a router and then we need to have some van connection now this van connection is something given by the service provider now you contact the service provider and the service provider is going to provide you the van connection and there are different types of technologies which are used by the service provider for providing the van connections so that's something what we are going to discuss in this section what are the different types of van technologies uh, which can be used and how they differ what are the major advantages and the disadvantages of those different types of van technologies now the, this is a sample diagram you know you will find some one thing on the internet where you have say, service providers have their own uh, connections connecting different different uh, cities and different countries as well now this is the fiber cable which is used by the service providers for connecting uh, connecting the different locations probably they use some special special machineries which is going to uh, where they are going to lay some fiber cables through the sea levels or the ocean level from the underground so that's what we call as submarine cabling and this is something done by the service providers and they are going to connect their major uh, port centers from one one country to another country probably they have some pre existing fiber cable and they own these locations and they can have some other uh, connecting different different locations where they will be using some pre existing fiber cable which is laid by the service providers now this is something what we are not getting into these things because this is something done by some uh, service providers to provide connectivity between their own exchange offices in different locations in the different cities and also in different countries now probably in india uh, there are some major four service providers if you talk about uh, and then depending upon the countries you know it the service providers can vary now initially we'll be getting into some of the basic wan connections which was used initially to provide the wan connection now if you just get back to the early days you know we we still use these lines now these lines are the dedicated connections between two different locations or it is also called as dedicated lines now apart from that there was one more technology which was used we don't use this nowadays now we call them as isdn and psdn technologies where the wan connection is provided between the two or more different locations over the existing telecom line so let's take an example there is a telecom company uh, like let's say if i if i take an example of bsnl in india here so there will be a telecom operator the provider who is going to provide the telephone connections Uh, the same telecom network which is used to build your wan connections now probably isdn integrated service digital network and psdn comes under this category now we call this as circuit switch technologies where they use the existing telephone networks now there is one more later on the lease lines and this uh, circuit switching has been replaced with some packet switching technologies where like there is something called frame relay we'll be getting into that more in detail uh, asynchronous transfer mode atm extra 25 networks they all comes under the packet switching technology where the packets are switched inside the service provider network from multiple routes now service provider will have a backbone network which is built by the service provider and the service provider will allow you to send his your customer information over the existing uh, service provider network so we'll be getting into that more in detail when we come back to frame relay atm and extra 25 are something we we are not going to discuss because they are something not much not not no more used we can say now even the frame relay uh, kind of implementations are also not much in use uh, in the today's networks it has been replaced with some vpns and the mpls technologies so probably we'll be getting into that uh, those things the modern wan connections also uh, more in detail in the next sections so probably in this video i'm going to just give some basic introduction on the different lease line connections how they are going to work now lease line connections are the one which which generally used in or the first kind of wan connections which is used to provide a dedicated connection like take an example i got a branch office in hyderabad here 
and my branch office i want to connect to my bangalore location or a different location now to provide this branch office i got a router let's say there is a router one which is connected in hyderabad and then i got a router two which is in a bangalore location now the wan connection between these two different locations is something given by the service port now whenever you ask for the service port as i discussed that he's going to install some v.35 modem connections and then the connection goes to the nearest uh, exchange office modems and then from there it going to connect to max and then back to another max and max to max uh, the hyderabad max to bangalore max there is a pre existing fiber cable for long distances and then it will come back to the modems and then coming back again on the modems and come back here now this is a typical lease line connection uh, which is used for providing the wan connections when i talk about fiber again that is something what i just showed you there will be a pre existing fiber connecting the different exchange offices of the service border now when i talk about lease lines it's a permanent connection between one route location to another location so which means let's take an example i got a branch office in one location location a and i want to connect to the location b and the location c and the location d i want to connect my main head office which is a and i want to connect this head office to connect to three different branch offices so probably we are going to take some three separate dedicated lines now diagrammatically we represent like this and most commonly we use serial ports for providing these connections so nowadays we are using ethernet ports because the ethernet port supports some long distance modems uh, long distance uh, in fact ethernet or the common ports which you will find and also they support high speed data transfer rates so but typically we use something called least lang connections it can be used for short or the longer distances short means connecting uh, mostly within the different cities probably nearby or connecting different countries long distances now the more distance you have the more you are going to pay to the service port so the the charges based on the distance between the two locations and based on the bandwidth what you are requesting for the amount of bandwidth you are requesting between the connections and and also the duration in fact these are the two major things which will decide the cost of the lease lines and the bandwidth is fixed whether we use whether we don't use so which means if i if the customer or if the service port agrees on 2 mbps of bandwidth you will definitely get a 2 mbps of bandwidth and it will be fixed and it will be available most of the time 24 by 7 so lease lines are a little bit more reliable connections because you have a separate dedicated connection given by the provider and the charges are fixed whether we use or we don't use so just like you know you have to you have to pay every month something like that so whether we use the link or whether we don't use you have to pay that's it but in case of isdn and psdn connections which we use over telecom lines the charges are based on the usage just like uh, we pay some postpaid connections or mobile bills probably it's something like that the more number of calls you make the more you have to pay so similar way the usage but here it's not like that now it, it will be fixed and it's going to use some analog circuits like i said there will be some modems marks between between the service port network for providing the connectivity which is going to repeat the signals some kind of analog circuits are present inside the service port but at the end we really don't matter for us as long as you have a connectivity between them and we are assigning some ip addresses on both the sides and we are able to communicate with each other now the one of the major dis, uh, disadvantage with the lease lines is so they are very much reliable but at the same time they are somewhat expensive to have a separate lease lines because if you take an example of one head office connecting to three different branch offices we need to have three separate lease line connections now if you want for redundancy purpose if you want to have one more connection from here to here you need to pay for a separate lease line connection between them the more number of connections you want the more number of dedicated lines are provided by the service portal and that's one of the major thing and it's not scalable you know especially even for the service portals it's not really possible to provide connection for each and every location uh, because the more number of sites increases it becomes very very difficult for the administrator to provide sorry the service portal to provide connectivity between each and every location 
even though the customer is ready to pay for that but still it's something not really scalable for uh, big networks uh, let's take an example uh, service pod is providing the wan connection for around 40 customers now probably in the next couple of months uh, the customers has increased from 40 to uh, 70 let's say so which means now the number of customer increases and also the customer size also increases so more number of customer sites increases it becomes very difficult for the service board to provide a dedicated line for each and every site because you know, the service board has to build a separate dedicated a circuit for each and every link so even though that the backbone you you still have this um, beta connection but connecting each and every uh, branch or exchange is something not really scalable okay so that's that's what about the lease line connections the lease line connections are very much dedicated connections given by the provider but the major drawback with the lease lines are they are somewhat expensive lines you just take the line from the service portal the service portal is going to install some modem on your location which is connecting to the thing and which is kind of the service port exchange office and then we just assign the ip addresses 10.001 10.002 probably connecting your serial links and you can use either any one of this encapsulation on the serial links like HDLC PVP and you can assign the IP addresses and you can start pinging between them and you can install some routing protocols and you can start communicating between them. Now this is a typical example of the lease line connections.